and welcome to the initial broadcast of WSN's podcast, The Three Wise Men. I'm Danny Holbrook, alongside Miles Holiday, and Mark Shine. Guys, how are we doing today? Great. I must, much emphasize that there's a question mark at the end. Of the <laughs> <laughs> there is yeah, a question mark, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's a great, great day, Danny. It's a, the week we've started high school volleyball, high school soccer, tennis, and golf has been going on, and football starts this Thursday night. It's a great week coming up. So, guys, here's what we're going to do every week. We're going to bring you the best high school coverage in all of Northwest Ohio. We're going to preview the list of WOSN games. We're going to let you know who's doing those games. We're going to talk about the players, the coaches. We're going to try to get some people in here for interviews every now and then. And we're going to talk about regional, local, state, and high school sports. Sound good to you guys? That sounds great because (laughs) all three of us, including everyone at at WOSN, we all love high school sports, Absolutely. And the stories that these athletes tell every single week and the passion these coaches have, they need to be highlighted, right? Yeah. So, guys, we're going to start the segment out today with the best thing we saw this week. I'm going to go ahead and go first. Here's what I saw, the best thing I saw. I'm going to repeat myself a few times because I get so excited. I'm driving around and I'm watching two a days. I'm watching the kids playing football. I'm watching the, the girls get ready for high school volleyball. I know it's not one particular thing, guys, but this is the best time of the year. You guys get excited. Look, Miles and I went down to Columbus. We got to see the Buckeyes participate in, in their practice drills. It just gets me excited to see a lot of new kids, new faces, new coaches, and it starts the cycle all over again. It really does, and it's the best time of year because – Everybody's together, right? Nobody's angry about playing time. Nobody's lost the game yet. The the excitement of the school, the opportunity in front of everybody. Imagine being a senior again and going through this time of year. You're going into your senior year. This is your last go around to play high school football, high school volleyball. The excitement is absolutely amazing. Mark, we made a comment the other day uh, on the radio. We said that every time we get on Facebook, we see people with their kids after football games and all the pictures, and we kind of made fun of it. But really, you're taking those pictures because you know how quick the season goes. Yeah, it does go really fast. If you're a high school player, you're a, let's say a football player, you get 10 games. Right. Now, if you're fortunate to make the playoffs, you get 11. You think of all the work you do in the off season through the summer, two days, and now you get 10 opportunities and young men enjoy each one of them. What's the best thing you saw this week, Mark? Well, actually, uh, we're going to we're talk about volleyball in some detail later on in our segment here, but I saw the Coldwater spike off. It's always one of the top volleyball tournaments in the area. Eight gyms, eight schools in the gym. It was packed. Now, when you go to Coldwater, big facility, right? But they play two courts at the same time, Mm -hmm. so you only have half of the bleachers open. Those were full. Great volleyball. Coldwater ends up defeating Fort Laramie, two of the top teams in our area in the finals. It was a great thing to see on WSN. Looking forward to more high school volleyball this year. Miles, you're not from the Lina area. You're from the Toledo area. I don't think people understand the difference in high school sports in the different area. This is just crazy town down here, right? (laughs) Yeah, especially when you get into the whole MAC and WBL area. I mean, it's just fantastic uh, support. But you go in these little towns, and it, you know, after a game on a Friday night, the whole town's on the football field. That, that's a, that's some special. And, and not that it's not like that up your way too, because there are a lot of schools right. that way that do the same thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, mostly the suburban areas. It's a little city, and not so much. But yeah, the suburban yeah. areas up What's there. What's the best thing you saw this week, man? It, <laughs> it, it really tickled me because I went to the Columbus Grove and Ayersville scrimmage the other day, and on the way out from the scrimmage, I'm walking out, and they have their practice field right off of the game field. And there's about 12 little kids and they're not paying attention to the scrimmage. They're taking a football and they're playing the game that we've all seen a billion times at a high school football game, right? They're playing football uh, on their own, man. It just it takes you back to when you're a little kid doing the same thing. You absolutely love it, man. It was so cool to see. <laughs> well, we were very local last year for a game and the little kids were on the field much before the game started. There's a kid back there with an arm. He's like seven or eight, ten, nine years old. He's throwing the ball better than most high school quarterbacks. So they're all fun times to see. I think Ohio State offered them, right? <laughs> it is an absolute passion around here in Northwest Ohio. Guys, let's get into it for the first week of games for WSN. I'm going to take a look at the first one, the Shawnee Indians and the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds. Our friends Darn Nevergall and Nate Garlock will be on the call for that. Mark, big, big moves at Shawnee this year. Coach Shane Wireman takes over after a successful, and I say successful, an absolutely right. successful run at Waynesville Goshen, three titles in a row, took them to places they'd never been before. LCC, they lost a couple big-time players from last year. Going to be a great matchup. It should be a really good game. And of course, it's at Lima Central Catholic. This year means they play down at Lima Stadium. It's on turf. It's a fast field, and we're going to have a chance to see what a new quarterback does at LCC and new what a new coaching staff can do at Shawnee. It's going to take some time. It's a, it's a development-type thing for Shawnee to bring a program together. 
Coach Pauly's going to try to replace two key players in Billy Burke and Carson Parker. If he's got people to do that, he's got nine starters back on offense, and that could be a really, really explosive football team at Lima Central Catholic. Miles, let's take a look at Lima Central Catholic when he talks about losing Carson Parker. We all see the big-time quarterback <laughs> yeah. commit standing back there just throwing darts. People forget this kid averaged 137 oh, rushing absolutely. yards again. Yeah. Look, third and four, the birds never worried because they just roll him out. That's third and seven, they never worried. They just never worried on third down. He was such a dynamic athlete. Hey, you and I absolutely loved Brady uh, or Brady Carson. Carson. Yeah, yeah. Brady is the quarterback. Edition, <laughs> but we absolutely loved Carson because of that, right? He, he could run you over. He could outrun you. And then just when you think he's a running quarterback, he'd throw a dart to Billy Burke for on a post for a touchdown. He was just a dynamic player, as good as anybody that we've seen in North. Northwest Ohio in a while. Danny, for me, it was like watching a mock play at Kenton. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. That's I a can great, run, yeah. I can throw, I'm physically strong, I'm athletic enough, and for those people, Kenton in their heyday, it's like that watching that type of quarterback. Mark, let's take a look at Shawnee. They, they struggled last year at 0-10. Yeah. They bring in Shane Wireman. Look, the fan base has got to be ecstatic just by looking at Shane's resume. I mean, he's won everywhere he's been. What's a realistic goal for the Indians this year? And and look, they've yeah. got players, they've got athletes. It's just going to take time. It, it absolutely does. First so I got to put a staff together and mm -hmm. get your staff on the same page as the head coach is. Then you got to get the kids to buy into what you're working with, what you want them to accomplish in the weight room, on the practice field, fundamental success. Put the scheme in. It's just a long, lengthy process. Needs to start in the middle school and give him time to make that program work. Give him three years and see where they are at Shawnee. And, and Miles, you've coached high school football yes. before. You look at Shawnee last year. They only averaged 12 points a game. You know, as a head coach, you want to get your kids excited. You want to score points. They, you want them to believe in the system. How tough is that going to be for Coach Wireman? Well, I, I think if anyone understands that, it's John Wireman because uh, Shane Wireman, because he went, oh, uh, took over a program that was 0-10. He did, right? right. Yeah. That's, That's a great point. That's a great point. So he knows uh, how to get things going uh, again in the right direction. So it's it's not ever a quick fix, right? There is no magic oil that you can pour over bodies and say, all of a sudden, we're going to win football games. It is a process, and he's going to have to get the guys to play in line. Now, a good thing for him, though, he does have a huge target in Michael Garlock, 6'3". Throw it up to him a couple times a game. Maybe he comes down, he gets some points that way. But it is going to take a while there. They are 0-10. So the biggest matchup, I think, against LCC, it's not a physical matchup. It's going to be a mindset, right? Remember, they are 0 and 10. Body language drops when oh, you're yeah, 0 and 10. Yeah. Effort drops when you're 0 and 10. Things become self fulfilling prophecy. Oh, here we're going to lose again. Can he get them to stay together if LCC gets up by two touchdowns? If they get up by three touchdowns? At the end of the year, can he get them to stay together and give great effort if they're 0 and 7, right? That's the big thing. You got to make sure you can get that effort even things aren't, when things aren't going That's well. That's a great point. Before we move on, Mark, go ahead. Well, so in baseball, you get a starting pitcher, a catcher, a shortstop, you've got a good football, baseball team. Yeah. You get a good point guard, you've got to start to a good basketball team. It takes a lot of good players to make a good football team. You, you look at LCC before we move on, Mark, and the, the three games they lost last year, and I know you've already done your homework because uh. nobody does it better <laughs> than you. But the three games they lost, that's it? Their offense wasn't on the field very much. They, they ran against teams like Kerry, who just ran the ball. Yeah. St. John's had a really good game plan against them. Bishop Hartley, albeit a bigger school, but they kept Carson Parker and the offense off yeah. the field. And, and that's where the, the success of this team will have to come. They've got nine starters back on defense, too, but they will have to tighten up against the run because there are some teams on their schedule this year who are just exactly that. Uh, great point by you, Danny, because I did that game against McComb, and McComb did not throw a single pass in the playoffs right. and just beat up LCC. Yeah. Very very physical. Now, LCC, though, that should be a strength this year. On the line of scrimmage, they have some huge dudes on the line of scrimmage. The mountain range of McKee, Gianni, and Dom, 285 and 250. Hey guys. Big fellas. So I think LCC is going to be fine on the line of scrimmage this year. Shawnee Lima Central Catholic, Thursday night at Spartan Stadium. Darn Nevergold, Nate Garlock on the call. Should be a dandy. And that will actually air Thursday at 10 p.m. on yes. WTO Douglas. Yes. So you can catch same day telecast with that one. Great point. All right, guys, let's move on. And look, I think we would all agree the Columbus Grove Bulldogs and the Pandora Gilboa Rockets. What a game they played last year, Mark. Mm -hmm. Columbus Grove, look, if Marion Local's not in town, Columbus Grove may be the premier, <laughs> premier uh, club in the, in the yeah, whole area, right, right? Right, right? I mean, they are fantastic. 7-0 and last year, 8-2, and and the two games they lost were, you know, close games other than the playoff game. They had a little trouble with Versailles, but hey, Versailles is a great team. Right. Columbus Grove comes in. Averaging 34.5 a game last year, Mark. Well, and if you want to talk about offense, that's the way this game, PG and Grove, has gone the last 10 years. There's, Grove's won six out of the last 10 with those two schools. The winning team in the last 10 meetings has scored at least 25 points. Mm. 
This, this has a chance to be another big offensive game. Yeah. Garrett Seawright, Evan Skillet are on the call, buddies of ours from WSN. Miles, you take a look at Pandora Gilba. You know you're co- if you're the coach, you're telling your kids, hey, look, we won last year. We beat this team last year. A really, really good team. Well, the Columbus Grove people might tell you they did, right? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a catch, wasn't a catch. Uh, one of those great I set plays. you up for that one. <laughs> but they did get the victory. Uh, they, they do lose uh, Aiden and Callan Harris. Both those that, guys That's huge. That's huge, yeah. yeah. Those guys were such weapons. Uh, catching the uh, the football. Uh, Corey Gherkin is back at the quarterback, though. Um, ball security, an issue last year for him as a sophomore. Fumbles, throwing interceptions. He's going to have to be much better as a, as a junior this year. Now, is he capable passer? Absolutely. 2,400 yards he threw for last year. But, Danny, the real matchup of this football game, though, is, you know, Columbus Grove. He has the guy, right? Trent Barraza. <laughs> to beat the guy, or to be the guy, you got to beat the guy, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Big play Barraza. I was at that scrimmage against Ayersville. Second time he touched it. I mean, he is just a different speed from everybody else. Scored easily, right? So how are they going to attack him? They're going to have to use their secondary to tackle an open field. He's going to get an open field, right? Can PG's DBs tackle him in open field, stop a 12-yard run turning into a 40- and 50-yard run? That's going to be the key to my, in my estimation. Mark Columbus Grove last year gave up only 13 points a game. Yeah. That, that is unheard of in high school football in, in this area with, with really some good coaching and dynamic offenses. Well, and the, one of the things they'll have to do at Columbus Grove is Zach Reynolds graduated. And he was a tremendous really defensive yeah, back. So really when you're good. trying to run five wides and things like that, he's very good at it. And he was also very good at tackling people in open space. So that's a key player for them to replace. They got a lot of good guys back. And one of them's Baraz, who's an excellent defensive player as well. Mm-hmm. So they got people back on defense, but they need to replace Reynolds. Miles Pandora Gilboa was first in the BVC last year, and they were no slouch on defense. Only gave up 15 a game. Can they keep that going this year? Well, they, they can because two unbelievable uh, linebackers, Andrew Miller and Ben Burkholder, those two guys really good players. are fantastic, yeah. right? So if, if Columbus Grove is just going to try and make their hay through A and B gap, that's going to be in the favor for Pandora Gilboa. They got two good linebackers. But – as we know, Barraza, what's he do? A gap, bounce the D gap in a hurry. And that's where I think those defensive backs for Pandora Gilboa have to really do a good job tackling. That game will be Friday night. As I said, Garrett Seawright, Evan Skilleter on the call. When will that replay, Mark? It replays at 7 o'clock, so set your DVR when you're out watching your favorite high school team that's not <laughs> called. You know, Columbus Grover, Pandora Gilboa, and, and catch up when you get home. All right, guys, let's move on to another BVC squad. The Liberty Benton Eagles tackle the Ottawa Glandorf Titans. Look, Mark, everybody knows Ottawa Glandorf really struggled last year. That is, that is not the norm in Ottawa Glandorf in any sports. That is a cr- tremendous athletic program. One and eight last year, one and nine. You know, they, they they only ran the ball 89 yards a game. They passed for 153, not a lot of offense, only averaged 14 a game. You got to believe it's going to be a better year this year. For, well, for the and you got Ken Schreiner. He's yeah, been exactly. There, he's got 198 wins. He hopefully yeah. gets him over 200 this year by more than just a couple. So he's got an experienced coach there who knows what he's doing in a town that has a lot of good athletes. I always look at things like this, Danny. Ottawa Glendorf won the boys' track in the Western Buckeye League in the spring of 24. Yes, they did. A lot of those guys are playing football this year. That means you've got athletes and you've got some speed. I look for OG to be much better this year. Guys, we know the guys on the call for this game. We got one right here. Miles Holiday, <laughs> Randy Roberts on the call. One of the best dynamic duos in all of Northwest Ohio high school athletics. Miles, you take a look at Liberty Bend. Traditional power in, in, in every sport, regardless. Lots of kids, lots of, you know, the, the athletic program is second to none. Uh Averaged almost 40 points a game last year. Yeah. They really got it going. Well, Randy and I, we will be celebrating our 200th uh, broadcast together oh, week two. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it'd be great if Coach uh, Schreiner and us uh, celebrate the same time. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really looking forward. Randy's carried me for years, so I'm uh, looking forward to uh, celebrating that. Now, you brought up the scoring ability of Liberty Benton, right? 40 points a game seven times last year. Now, Mason Mod though, he's gone. He was the, the architect mm-hmm. of that throwing the football around. But guess who's back? The University of Toledo commit, Seth Elkert. 6'3", 185, Mr. Yeah. Electricity when he catches the football. Uh, bad news for OG. We went to the scrimmage against St. Henry last week. A lot of receivers running free for St. Henry in that secondary. They're going to have to do a much better job of stopping Mr. Electric, Seth Elkert. Yeah, Danny, earlier you talked about Shawnee and getting off to a good start and, and what happens with your program and convincing your guys OG lost to Eastwood last year, 21-18. Yeah, that's right. If they turn that game around, if they win that game 21-18, 
maybe that propels their whole season in a different direction. I think this is an important opening game for OG. Mark, I want to get your take on this matchup in, in this regard. Don't you think it's I just think it's fantastic for Northwest Ohio to have two programs like this start the season out. I mean, yeah. you, we don't talk about schools that are pretty much similar in yeah. size, Liberty, and they're not afraid to play each other. And they look, the history of Liberty Benton, Ottawa, Glendorf in all sports is tremendous. Absolutely. It is tremendous. I think this is a great week one matchup. Okay, so you're a Liberty Benton fan. You want to go play Elyria Catholic right, up there or you want right. to play OG down the road. I, I agree. I'd like to see matchups like this. Uh, challenge yourself with somebody local. The crowd will be better, a better atmosphere, I think, for both schools. I think this is a really good pickup. You know, Mark brought up a a good point about a a tight early loss. This was not a team that got blown out a whole lot last year. Five times they lost by one score or less. You have another dynamic player make a couple plays in those games. It's a different season last year for OG. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday on the call for Liberty Benton, Ottawa Glendorf. What a game that's going to be. 10 o'clock Friday, WSN. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Charles River, dedicated to improving life by discovering new therapies and cures for devastating diseases. We are a strong supporter of our local community, as well as educational opportunities in science, technology, engineering, and math throughout the Allen County region. Learn more at charlesriver.com. Loddock's Jewelry at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert, your family-owned and operated full-service jeweler for over 70 years. Serving all your fine jewelry, appraisal, and repair needs. Visit us in Van Wert or online at Loddock's.com. Metzger Financial Services, focusing on helping our clients develop a customized, cohesive financial strategy that fits your unique needs. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Parkway Crestview, gentlemen. Garrett Mansfield, Jeff Overholzer on the call for that one. Parkway comes in at one and seven last year, two and eight. The Matt Crestview, four and three and six and four. It's not hard to figure out about the Panthers, Mark. They gave up a lot of rushing yards and they gave up a lot of points. If you can't stop the run and you can't run the ball yourself, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Yeah, and it's a Parkway team. I think first games are very important for teams like Parkway because once they get into their conference schedule, It's just devastating getting into the MAC. If they get off to a good start, win a couple of games early on, give them some confidence going into the the rest of the MAC schedule, that certainly helps. A loss here to Crestview early, a loss in week two, and you're going into a MAC schedule. Very difficult, I think, for the Panthers. And Miles Crestview comes in last year, the number one passing team in the Northwest Conference, averaged 175 yards a game. They could put points up. They averaged 30 points a game. It's a good program. They're going to be better than six and four. I can promise you that. Well, one thing about uh, Cole Hardings, uh, he's going to throw the ball short, let guys catch it and run, right, with his offense. Smart offensive guy, good head football coach, had a really good first year there. I think things are going to get better every year at Crestview. Few. Now, ball security going to be absolutely huge. Parkway, boy, they turned it over in a ton last year in the MAC. And as we know, Crestview had struggles with that. Penix threw 13 interceptions last year. Mm-hmm. Going to have to do a better job. Whoever takes care of the football early in that game on Friday, I think is going to be the winner. Mark, I think this Crestview team, in, in, in all seriousness, I think this Crestview team has a chance to make noise in the Northwest Conference. I and agree. when I say noise, I think they're going to play a factor in who wins it, whether they win it or Grove yeah. or you know whoever. I think they're going to play a factor in it. Well, that. you mentioned their passing game in Penix. He's a quarterback. He's back again. He's yeah. I mean, really he threw good. 13 touchdown yeah. passes and 13 picks, but he is a back. He's a solid player. If he obviously keeps the ball in control of his particular team, that really helps them. they got to replace their offensive line. You know, they got to keep him upright. they got to get some running game going. But if they're able to do that, then I think that really puts Crestview in a good spot. Miles, you look at Crestview, and he's talking, he brought it up, Penix. 13 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. You know what it says to me? It says to me that kid has confidence in his arm. Now, it doesn't always work out the best way. Right. But when you're throwing that many interceptions and that many touchdowns, you, you, you believe in yourself. And you got to believe that – from one year to the next, those interceptions will be cut down. Well, I remember, too, 13 interceptions, and he still missed some time. He was injured for a couple games. So 13 interceptions, uh, any coach will tell you, way too much, right? And mm-hmm. I think Penix understands that. But good news. Ren Sheets is back, yep. right? Was he 6'12"? <laughs> Throw it up to him. <laughs> he, like, he caught 41 passes last year. I'm throwing it to him 41 times a game with that height, right? Just throw the fade, let him catch it, and you'll look like a really smart quarterback. Parkway, Danny, it's going to be interesting to see what they do because they're playing 
playing outside. Their head football coach, Brian Schmidt, been an indoor football coach for the last 17 years. He's going to walk out on the field and say, what? where's the roof at, right? <laughs> Real important for them to get off to a great start. Hey, let's talk red sheets and talk like we're big-time college announcers. He has a catch radius. <laughs> <that's outstanding. laughs> we use the phrase. How's that? Yards right. after catch, catch <laughs> radius. This kid's going places. We can throw them all out there. Garrett Mansfield, Jeff Overholzer on the call for that one. Now, one last thing about Crestview, right? You and I both think that they have a chance to challenge for the, the league title, I do. Title, I right? really yeah. do. Now, they were 5-1 and one a year ago, and then Bluffton and Columbus Grove. Bluffton got them 21 nothing. Columbus Grove got them 37 to nothing. They're going to have to really rise to the occasion this year if they're going to get it done. Yeah, I, I, 10 o'clock Friday yeah. night, WTLW. All right, guys, let's take a look at our next game. couple of veterans on the call for this one. Ooh. Danny Holbrook, Mark Shine. <laughs> uh, can we pull it off, Mark? <laughs> Turn the volume down. St. <laughs> Henry at St. Mary. So, okay, last year San Henry struggled, right, Danny? They did. And they won this game 17 to nothing. Yeah, it was, a, def- it was a St. Henry, big game. Big game for them. They got off to a great start last year. They kind of struggled for a while in the middle part of the season. We saw them in the tournament. Their defense was outstanding in the tournament last year. They shut St. Mary's out last year in the opening game. They'll need an effort like that again this year because St. Mary's is really yeah, good. Yeah, Mark, you know, when we watched St. Henry last year in the tournament, they were getting better. They beat oh. a good Fort Loramie team, and the next week we had them. And Sonia, yeah. who was the number one team in the state, although they got beat by Marion Local, so. yeah. but and Sonia, a quality team, they only lost that game by six. The thing that we noticed in the game that we did was how resilient they oh, were. Oh, my goodness, they, they never they, stopped. They turned the ball, had terrible field position the entire first half and still hung in there and won the football game. Defense was outstanding throughout the course of the game, and they got a brand new coach this year, new attitude. St. Henry football has been great for a long, long time. Let's see if they get back That's to that That's right. Area. The optometrist is down in St. Henry. The eye doctor running right. the show down yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be excited. Miles, you look at St. Mary's look. It is not a secret for the recipe to success in the lores and the history of St. Mary's. It's run, run, run. They averaged 349 yards a game last year, Miles. That is unheard of in high school football. Think they'll change any this year? <laughs> Look, at St. Mary's, as long as they stay in that robust tee, double tight, and just beat you up, they absolutely terrify me, right? I've been on a defensive side of that where I'm a defensive coordinator, and they're getting three. Five? Uh-oh, now it's eight. Now it's 15. That was off tackle, and they got 22. Yeah. That's what happens against those teams that keep you boxed in and just run you over by the end of the night. Your courage is gone, and you're just hanging on as they're running. You know, Miles, I heard Jim Trussell one time. His opening game as an offensive coordinator, he ran the same play four consecutive times. Yeah. His head coach came down and said, Coach, when are you going to run another play? He said, when they stop this yeah. one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and that's what happens with St. Mary's. You better be able to stop that, that trap and that off-tackle off stuff and the, the t- trap sweep dive. And if you can't stop it, you're in trouble. Yeah, Mark, you and I talked about it earlier in the week. Uh, we both believe that St. Henry and Wapak are going to be the two top teams in the WBL. Uh, I think St. Mary's, yeah, did I say St. Saint- Mary's. Yeah, St. Mary's. Yeah, Saint Mary's. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Mary's and Wapakoneta are yep. both going to be there. St. Mary's a real shot to take that crown back. Well, and at the end of the segment today, we're going to talk about our Power 5 teams. I, I got St. Mary's yeah. there. <laughs> that right now. This is going to be a good team. They lost their quarterback, but in that offense, your quarterback, so as far as soaring the football downfield, is a... You know, I need to, right, as right, opposed right, to right. I want to. Yeah. And uh, Well, let's talk about quarterback, though. St. Henry got a really good one. Charlie Whirling coming back this oh, year. Yeah. He yeah. is fantastic. I saw him against OG in the scrimmage. He has risen. It might be one of the most improved players in Northwest Ohio. Mm-hmm. He was really impressive. He's got a couple good receivers on the outside. And their, their organization, Josh Whirling, they, they come in. They're going to yeah. be a really solid football team this year. Yeah. And that will be on Friday night. You and I will be on the call for that game, Mark. And then it will air Saturday night at 7 p.m. on WSN. All right. Guys, the next game is near and dear to my heart. It's Upper Sada Valley and Ada. And the reason I say that, I played in this rivalry. I coached in this rivalry. I've attended this rivalry. Look, they're two small schools. They don't make a lot of noise. Ada's had some tradition over the past few years. They've been kind of on hard times now. You look at Upper Sada Valley, nobody, nobody has made more strides since they've left the Northwest Conference and Upper Sada Valley in football going to the NWCC. It was a great fit for them. They were 8-1 and one last year in the league, 8-3 and three overall. Mm-hmm. They've got a great core, Miles. Maddox Underwood, Mason Thompson, Ryan Roberts. That's a good squad coming back. This should be a really exciting game, and it's a rivalry game. These schools are separated by six miles. Yeah, a tough one last year, right? 24-22 yep. for USV. Ada got to win one of their three wins last year. Uh, they have a dynamic playmaker in Levi Green back at yes, quarterback. Yes, they do. If you do not get him to the ground early, you're going to see him dancing in the end zone because he's got breakaway speed. So real important for USV to, to get to him early in that football game. Now, 
If it turns into a score fest, USB is pretty good too. Five times last year, they scored over 50 points in a game. So this might be a track meet. Our uh, USB had a freshman, let him in quarterback sacks last year. Yeah. Pretty common name over at USB, Sanders. They got a pretty good bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> they do it. And I think it's a really good program. Good facility, it is. good program. Yep. I like what they do there. I, I've been thinking along the lines of Ada and where they stand. They're going to a new conference. Yes, BBC. It's a chance to, like, to, to start your football program and go from here. They were, what, three and seven a year ago? Yeah, three and but, seven. Okay, let's see what happens. We get to play USV, and then we're going into that BVC, and let's see how we match up with, you know, with Van Lu and with Arcadia and with those teams and play against those people this year. But I think a good start would really help them. Now, Danny, you were part of this rivalry as a player. How cool is it as a player? And then... Furthermore, why has Ada kind of dominated rivalry recently? Yeah, you know, numbers. I'll be mm -hmm. honest with you. Upper Side Valley's numbers have been low, but Coach Dustin Price has done a great job. Look, guys, when, when I – when you're part of this rivalry, it's more than just a game. It really is. And yeah. I know people laugh when I, when I say that, but Upper Side of Valley Ada in all sports, they're six miles apart. The kids know each other. They're related. Mm -hmm. They play summer ball together. It is a huge, huge rivalry. Upper Side of Valley wants to get back on the winning side of this. Ada's dominated over the years. Ada had a run there, Mark, and oh, Miles, of, of just incredible D1 quarterbacks. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. NFL quarterback, right. you know, uh, college quarterbacks. And look, everybody knows if you have a great quarterback. That's why I really like Upper side of Valley in this. Maddox Underwood, a fantastic athlete. He's running the show there. I like Upper Side of Valley's chances in this game. You're right, though. Ada in a new conference, what a game if they could pull this one off. Yeah, if they get a win this year or even have a really strong showing this year that sets them up going into the BVC, I think that's really beneficial to them. It's one of those things like, you know, you can start all over again. We're not playing the same people. We've had a reputation of how we play against Jefferson or how we played against Spencerville. How Now it's all brand new stuff. I'm looking forward to see how they go. Miles, you've coached at the, uh, up in the Toledo area, the Michigan area. Tennessee. Tennessee. You've coached yeah. everywhere. When you get a rivalry game and it's rivalry week and your kids know it's right, especially starting out week one, how exciting is that? What do you tell your kids? How do you calm them down? Look, the USV kids, the Ada kids, they're on cloud nine right now. Nobody's lost. Nobody's gave up a touchdown everybody's excited how'd you handle those rivalry games but it wasn't rivalry week it was rivalry year yeah, you, you, yeah. every uh -huh. single day you did something in the weight room we'd always do what we called irish push-ups at the end of our workout we'd do 50 push-ups and we'd say one irish two irish three irish, uh -huh. because that was our biggest rival houston county the irish we had them in our fourth row all the time you weren't allowed to wear the color to green in our field house because that was their color so it's got to be always in your your thought process at all times yeah so patrick camler Dan Aaron Gilbert on the call for that one, Friday night, replay at? Saturday morning at 10.30 on WTLW. So Ada Upper Sada Valley, St. Henry, St. Mary's, Parkway, Crestview, Liberty Benton, Ottawa Glandorf, Columbus Grove, Pandora Gilboa, and Shawnee LCC to kick off WSN's coverage. Man, what a great week of football, guys. I'm just getting excited to sit here. You know who wins? We do. We do. We all win. <laughs> they get to watch it. We get to broadcast it. It's a win-win for everybody. Absolutely. Danny, I sit in with the guys who planned our football schedule this year. There's a bunch of other games we could have chosen mm -hmm. that night to go to. These are the ones we, best yeah. ones we could come all up All right, with. guys, before we go on to the next segment, your game of the week for WS10 that just excites you the most. St. Henry St. Mary's because you and I are there. <laughs> That's what, that was exactly what I was going to pick. I set you up, Mark. Miles, you can't say your game. <laughs> I was going to say that's the second best game behind Liberty Benton and OG. Uh, but I really like that PG Columbus Grove matchup. Those two teams always have a slobber knocker in week one. That are your matchups for the WSN week one of high school football. Charles River, dedicated to improving life by discovering new therapies and cures for devastating diseases. We are a strong supporter of our local community, as well as educational opportunities in science, technology, engineering, and math throughout the Allen County region. Learn more at charlesriver.com. Loddick's Jewelry at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert, your family-owned and operated full-service jeweler for over 70 years. Serving all your fine jewelry, appraisal, and repair needs. Visit us in Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. Metzger Financial Services, focusing on helping our clients develop a customized, cohesive financial strategy that fits your unique needs. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 
Mark, let's transition over okay. to volleyball. You are Mr. Volleyball in the area. You call <laughs> wow. a lot of games for WSN. I know Miles enjoys volleyball. I like volleyball. Just got off a great Olympic uh, two weeks in yeah. Paris with the volleyball teams. Let's talk about some of the better players and programs in Lima Land. Well, the, the area in the southern part of our viewing area, the volleyball is just outstanding down, down in the southern part of our viewing area. You can look at the MAC this year. Okay, so the Bremen's coming back, right? Defending state champions. They've got Melina Schrader, who's going to the University of Dayton to play volleyball. She was co-player of the year with Coldwater Spencer Etzler, who's going to Stanford to play volleyball. Wow. I mean, that's the, a pretty good program. That's a pretty good <laughs> program that, that she's going to be a part of. The volleyball in that particular, New Bremen has got four letter, four people back who were um, uh, a first team or second team all conference a year ago. Coldwater's got three people back. St. Henry's got three people back who were all conference last year. Marion Local's got two players back, and they were um, uh, lost, lost their coach, got a new yeah. coach this year. They're coming back. They were good last year. The MAC last year won 71% of their non conference volleyball games. 71 percent. Okay, it's amazing. So here's That's a number that kind of makes you pause, right? Like, holy moly, 71. Yeah. If you want to look at how good the conference was, Delphi St. John's could not win a volleyball game last year in a conference. They were six and six in non-conference play. That's incredible. It's just a, it's just a great uh, conference. And I'm thinking, you know what? I didn't even think about Fort Recovery. Who, who they just won the other day over Rushi, who's supposed to be really good down in the Shelby County League. Right. So they, and they won. So the volleyball in that conference is very good. And as long as we're talking about that particular area, Fort Recovery, I mean, Fort Laramie is going to be very, very good again. John Rogers' team is outstanding, as they always are. They were second in the cold water spike off we talked about a moment ago. Uh, the volleyball through that area is really, really good. Mark, let me ask you this, and it's a kind of a silly question, but I want to ask it anyways. Why is it so good? What do they just do? They just work at it the most. Do they have yeah. the better athletes? What's the secret every year? Well, the answer is yes. A number one, <laughs> the volleyball is important in that area, yes. and the kids start playing at a young age. I mean, you go to the games, the little girls are on the sidelines bumping the ball up in the air. They're playing volleyball a lot in that area. The coaching is outstanding, and it's kind of like you know what? If I don't work at my game. I'm going to get hammered yeah. because everybody else around here is really, really good. You, you talk to a lot of those young ladies, they understand it has to be a year-long commitment, right? And they're playing club volleyball, right? You're traveling around the country. You're playing in Annapolis, Florida because you're playing every single weekend. It's not a sport that if you want to be really good in, that oh, season's over. We'll see you again next yeah. fall, right? you got to work at it. Yeah. Miles, I know that you follow the Shawnee Volleyball Program. You yeah. have a coach on your Rick radio Hutchins. show Fantastic. yesterday. Yeah. What, a, what a terrific uh, – kind of like a hidden seat. Secret, Shawnee, they were fantastic last year. Probably going to be as good this year. Yeah, won the WBL last year for the first time in school history. What a great job Brooke Hutchins has done resurrecting that program, getting it on top of the WBL. Has a special player, Carly Hutchins. She's going to be really good, plays all three levels. Now, can they figure out a, another setter? Because if Carly's the one that has to set all the time, well, she's not the one that's finishing, right? She has right. to set. So they're going to have to find someone that be a two-set system so she can get involved in the kills. Now, the cool thing about this, Mark, August 31st, Johnny is going to try and play an outdoor volleyball game on their football field. We saw it done in the state mm -hmm. early in the summer. What an exciting thing. I think that will be great for the area, great for her program. That's a fantastic job she's doing over there. Mark, what do we got on WSN this week coming up for uh, this volleyball? Week, well, first of all, we've got game Tuesday night. That'll air on Wednesday night. But then we are in Parkway on Saturday for their tournament. I'll be there with Garrett Mansfield. Parkway always runs a really classy tournament. A lot of really good schools there. And, and we'll look and see that will air then on Sunday night at 7 p.m. Something we tried to do a year ago. You know, you're watching those, those pro games on Sunday. One starts at 4.20 and it's ending right around 7 o'clock. There's a gap until the Sunday night game comes on at 8.30. So WSN will try to have a volleyball game for you every Sunday night at 7 o'clock. This will be a tournament this week. Fantastic job, guys. Can't wait for the volleyball season to get started. We've talked high school football. We've talked a little volleyball, guys. Let's move over to the big boys. Boys. Let's go to the <laughs> Ohio State University, our favorite team. We love watching Ryan Day and the Buckeyes. Depending on what uh, outlet you're looking at, people have them at number one. People have them at number two. Look, it's a star-studded lineup. Let's go to the negative first. Mm -hmm. What's got you concerned about this team, Mark? Go Mark? ahead, Mark. <laughs> okay. We've, we've all been in coaching before. Yes. Can you have too much talent? Okay, I understand you what got you're five saying. guys Absolutely. in the quarterback right. room, and each one of them wants to be on the field. Now, you can say, well, they're all getting NIL money, okay, but you've got to showcase what you can do at Ohio State 
before you could go to the next level and play there. So you got five guys right now who want to be on the field at quarterback. You got two running backs. One of them had, what, 500 plus carries last year. You had 400 plus, it was hurt a little bit. They're going to want their carries. So what happens? It's, it's all nice right now, but when you start getting onto the field, can you have too much talent and maybe a little bit of dissension that creeps in? And I think particularly if you would happen to lose a game early, mm-hmm. that will happen to the dynamics of your team. Miles, yeah. we look at this roster. It is absolutely star-studded. Maybe the best roster that we've ever seen in Columbus with star power. There's always room for improvement. Where do you think the Buckeyes need to lean on heavy to get this team going where they need to go? Oh, running the football when they want to run the football, right? Let's be honest. Ryan Day's always been a throw-first mindset uh, guy. He, he was a quarterback, right? What do quarterbacks like to do? They like to throw the football, sure. right? So bringing Chip Kelly in and Chip's uh, r- recent DNA as an offensive coordinator has been let's run the football, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the thing, right? If you win national titles, look at Michigan. You, know, you can talk about they knew teams' plays. They cheated, all that. But – when they wanted to run the football and you loaded up the box and they loaded up the box that we're going to run right here, they did, right? Yeah. They ran the football. And that's how you win a championship. You're going to have to be able to be the more physical football team at some point in time. Now, to speak on Mark's point, though, Pat Riley called that the disease of me, right? Mm-hmm. Right. You get that filtering in, that locker room. I think, Mark, it might fester when it's – that crunch drive, the last second drive, you got to go in, right? And maybe it's Henderson that's the running back. And Junkins thought that he should have been that guy. And then, you know, then someone asked that wrong question in an emotional moment after a game. Hey, Quinshawn, why weren't you in the game? Why was it Travy and Henderson? Well, uh, coach's decision, man. I, you know, I, I thought I could have done it, right? And that's when that stuff starts to fester. So hopefully Ryan Day, he's getting paid, what, $80 million to, to navigate that stuff. So hopefully he does okay. that well. You guys have a better football background than I do. Can you play them both? At yeah. the same time. And you, if so, what does that do? Because uh, now we got a block for me and i got a block for you. And how's I'll, that I'll work? tell you, Mark, you can play them both, and here's the simple reason why. Travion Henderson has a history of injuries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've got to, he's got to understand. Yeah. If we're going to be successful, you have to be healthy, Travion. When you look at him run, when you watch the tape of him, I don't think there's a more talented back in all of America. There really isn't, other than the guy beside him <laughs> yeah. in Quinshawn Judkins. If they... You know, in high school, we talk about parents accepting your kids' roles. If those two, at this level, can accept their roles, I think the sky's the limit. Now, Mark, when you say play them both, you mean on the field at at the the same same time. time. Can they both be on the field at the same time? This is great. I love that you brought it up because there is nobody better at finding matchups in football than Chip Kelly. He does a great job. He'll put two running backs on the field, right? So what's that do? You have to equal that personnel-wise to linebackers that are going to be equal that, right? Junkins catches the ball extremely well. You put him in a slot, now you have a favorable matchup right there. So him moving the chess pieces around, Chip Kelly does that fantastic. You will see packages where both of them are on the field. The, the, the bugaboo with this running back room is this, Marks, that they have suffered some preseason injuries. Mm-hmm. You're going to, if, if Travion Henderson gets hurt, and there's no reason to believe he won't because that's his history, he's been hurt every year as a Buckeye. You got two other options, Peoples and Williams oh, Dixon, Peoples. who are both true freshmen. Miles and I watched them both Ooh. run. They're both fantastic. Gilly and I, a couple years ago, had uh, Sam Williams Dixon playing against Van Wert in the high school playoffs. Yeah. They're both fantastic talents, but they're freshmen. They're freshmen. And that brings me to my point of the thing that I'm worried the most about. And I, when I say the most, it is the number one thing for me. I don't think it's going to be an issue after game six or seven, but it's the offensive line. It's the one unit that takes the longest to gel. Now, the Buckeyes don't have a daunting first couple of games. They can easily into it, but I've seen enough of Josh Simmons that I, I worry about him. I, I think he's got all the tools to be a great uh, a left tackle, um, but they're going to have to figure some things out at right guard. You know, Tisha Bowl is going to come in. He is a massive human being. Uh, <laughs> Tigre is yeah, big, he's huge. Man. We saw um, him in person. And I thought I was looking at a skyscraper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Justin Fry swung and missed on a couple big-time recruits, so, you know, there are some issues in that offensive line room, but I like what Miles said. If you're going to run the football, there's no better coach to play for than Chip Kelly. He took a UCLA team that was down and out and made them the top rushing school in the country. Yeah, we forgot that it's okay to run the football, right? Yeah. We mm-hmm. fell in love with those Ohio State fans, and rightfully so, because the wide receiver position is a glamour position now. We've had unbelievable talent there, right? But we always forget November, cold, rainy, sure. miserable. How do you stay warm? Well, you beat up on the guy in front of you, and that's running. Well, I mean, we're going to laugh about it, but USC going to Minnesota in November. <laughs> UCLA going to Wisconsin yeah. in November. Yeah. It's, it's a fact. You get yeah. used to it. So, all right, we talked about the things we're worried about. What are you excited about, Mark, for this Buckeye team? Actually, Danny, I'm excited to stop talking. 
Yeah, you know, we've been, been yeah. talking about this great. team really since the, you know, the end of the season last year in the bowl game and all that. We've been talking and talking and talking. I'm excited to get on the field and see what the talent has been assembled and the coaching staff that we put together can do on the field. Stop talking about it. I love it. I love it. Miles, what are you excited about? I'm really excited to see the defense. Uh, this is a defense that was one of the best in college football a year ago. And basically, it's the same group coming back, right? With a better secondary, right? This is going to be a lot of fun. Jack Sawyer was incredible the last half of the year. I see him being a guy that teams are going to have, well, how do we deal with this fella? You can't block him one-on-one. -on -one. He is my uh, early pick to be the def Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. And I'm excited about Will Howard, guys. I know a lot of people aren't excited. He is a kind of a generic pick that we got out of Kansas State. I watched a lot of game tape on this kid. When, when plays break down, that's when he's really, really – he rushed for nine touchdowns last mm -hmm. year, guys. Our previous quarterback had minus six yards rushing <laughs> last year. I'm so excited to see the first time everything goes crazy and Will Howard has to – Guy runs a four four forty. Yeah, he's fast. He's really he's fast. Big and fast. He's yeah. really fast. Dan, I'm really do you excited. think since you're going to running quarterback, coach was a little bit concerned about his quarterback room last year. He didn't let McCord run. Right. Will he let Will Howard run because he knows he's got guys behind him? I'm just going to say this, Mark. I believe it's the reason he came to Ohio State. Yep. When he when he sat down with Ryan Day and Chip Kelly and they said, "Hey, we want you to be the Buckeye quarterback," you got to believe Will Howard's going. You're going to let me run because they did at Kansas. And I don't think he's coming if they're not. And I believe that Ryan Day understands that. And now, if he if he kind of puts the hammer on him and doesn't let him run, it's going to say more about the rest of the quarterback room than it does about Will Howard. Mm. I, I think Ryan Day is finally seeing the light, right? Yeah. You, you, if you win the national title in college football, you have to have a at least a threat of a kid right. that can run the football from the quarterback position, right? You, you saw it maybe come to fruition. Remember, they should have beat Georgia uh, in the Peach Bowl. Uh, C.J. Stroud, 85 yards rushing that day. We're like, where, where was this all year long, right? Mm -hmm. Ryan Day now realizes you have to have a guy, you might not want to run him 10, 12 times a game, but a guy that can if you need him to. Yeah. Guys, let's wrap the show up with our Power <laughs> 5 Northwest Ohio football teams. I've been waiting for this segment the whole show. So excited when I got the show sheet. I'm super pumped. I'm going to let you go, Mark, the guru of Northwest Ohio football. <laughs> Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a right. good thing. Okay, so I started out with 13 football teams. Okay. Okay? And, and I really, were, I worked on this a long time, Danny, and I still am sure I got it right. But I decided to go with the top team in three conferences. I put Mary Local number one okay. in the MAC. I put St. Mary's number two because I think they're going to win the WBL. I put Columbus Grove number three because I think they'll win the Northwest Conference. And after that, boy, you could throw a net over the guys <laughs> that I have left. But I decided to go with proven coach. Proven tradition, good quarterback, make Wapak number four. Mm. And then I went, who's really hungry? Who's been good the last couple of years we didn't maybe know enough about because of injuries or whatever? I put Minster number five because nice. I think Brogan Steffi and James Niemeyer, good coaching staff with Whiting. I think they're hungry because they've had issues the last few years and didn't let them play their best football. I put Minster number five. Now, disclaimer to all the wonderful people listening to this podcast right now, we're probably all going to be wrong <laughs> on this. <laughs> but in the process of doing that, then, Danny, I left out LCC, Coldwater, oh, McComb. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I left off. All could be there. Yeah, I left off a bunch of teams. Like, Man, I, I like how you just made up with a lot of the fan yeah, bases. That was my goal. <laughs> you you want to have a quiet experience grocery shopping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Miles, who you got? You're power five. In no particular order. I okay. Too early to say who the number one is. but the, Mark had no problem saying I, it. <laughs> I'm going to have no problem saying it. Heck, I don't shop here. I might as well, right? Um, so I have St. Mary's. Just love the way that they can control a game if they want to run into football. Uh, Wapakoneta, I mean, they should be at least the top team in the WBL. Talent levels through the roof down there. Columbus Grove, we talked about all the fun parts. Remember, they have a quarterback in best who completed a school mm -hmm. record 61% of their passes to go along with Trent Barraza. So he's going to be a, a good factor as well. And I have cold water just because Chip Otten, yep. right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, how do you ever bet against Chip Otten? The guy is just a fantastic coach. Got the quarterback, Blackberger, coming back. He is fantastic as well. And then um, that little school, Marion Local, I heard yeah, they're pretty they're good pretty as well. Good, yeah. Yeah. Guys, I went a different route. I, I, we're going to have some of the same teams, but I went with four teams that I think are going to be the tops. And then the two, I put two at the five spot, and I'll explain to you. My first team is obviously Marion Local. Look, to be the king, you got to knock the king off. Yeah, Nobody's absolutely. knocked the king off. That is the most incredible thing I've ever witnessed in high school athletics. The Marion local program yeah. is, it, it, I, I, I try, when people come from out of town and ask me about it, you can't really explain it. You just got to see it. They just you, play football better. You, well, you, yeah. and, and you walk out there and you see these kids coming out and you're like, eh, well, they, they don't look that impressive. <laughs> and 
then they just destroy you. It's incredible. I, I know what you mean because the first time I did one of their games with Aaron Matthews years ago, I expected to see like all these Division One yeah. Ohio State Michigan recruits and. They're all like the same kid. Yeah. But boy, were they good. <laughs> Second team I've got is Wapakoneta. Look, they are fantastic. Moyer does a great job, and his son is a quarterback, and that's a big plus down mm. there. He is a third-year starter yeah. as a junior. Look, everybody knows it's the most important position on the field, and when you have a kid who's a coach's son who's as good as this kid is, it's, it's hard to beat them. They don't lose many games. Guys, they had Marion Local on the ropes last year. We all saw that game. That's a great program. Next, I've got St. Mary's. I don't know that Wapak's going to win the WBL. If they don't, I think St. Mary's will. And then my fourth team is Coldwater. Tradition, yeah, year yeah. in and year out. They beat the best player in high school football last year in Tavian mm -hmm. St. Clair. What a program they have down sure there. Is. We see it year in and year out. Now, I've got the team in five that we all agree on should be on the list is Grove. But I got a slash in there because I got a sleeper team. Oh, are you guys ready for I my like sleeper team? It's my sleeper team. Now, are they going to win the WBL? I don't know. Are they going to be better than they were last year? I think so. The team's been snake bit the last couple years, but they got their quarterback coming oh, back. They I got the who. best defensive player in yeah, Lima Land coming back. It's the Elida Bulldogs. I love Elida. Parker Krim yeah. is a D1 prospect. Big Ryan time. Magoo is, look, Cannon. he's a big-time quarterback that nobody knows about yet. He's six foot four. He's a gunslinger. I love their coaches and Harmon. I like their their, their facilities. Yeah. I like Amari everything. Wash. Yeah, Amari, I like everything about Elida. If they do good, guys, remember podcast one. Yeah, you can't <laughs> forget by saying just only Parker Krim. It's Parker Krim, the Krim, Krim Reaper. Reaper. Yeah, That's right, yeah. buddy. <laughs> so, guys, uh, any other surprise teams? I know, Mark, you threw a few out there. I, I did. Yeah. Uh, Macomb is always good. Chris Algie is oh, as good one of my high favorite coaches. football coach yeah. as, as around. He's and awesome. I, what I like about him is if we got a running football team, we run the football. Yeah. If we got a yeah. team that can throw, we throw in the football. He, he adapts to what his talent level does. I think they're good. Don't, don't sleep on Crestview. You mentioned them a right. little bit a while ago. LCC's got guys back. I, I don't know where we go from here. I, I think I get. I thought there were 13 really, really good high school football teams in our area. Yeah, if, you, if your list didn't have anybody you had on there and you had a different list, I would uh, be like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, Chris Algy brought him up, man. I, I always love visiting with him. It's like talking to Mike Leach uh, years ago when he was at Mississippi State, right? He's yeah. just that, that character guy. But a surprise team, I'll, I'll keep this in mind for you guys. Defiance. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Bulldogs. Being on the rise, yeah. Brez Ziffel back at quarterback. Anti Wilder, is there anyone faster in the WBL than him? He's back, right? Abel Rubio running back is back for them. That is a team that is going to play extremely hard because they've shown they're going to. Travis Cooper, they play hard every single every single Friday night, right? They improved last year. Will they make that next step with a veteran group? It'll be important to see. Guys, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I know it's going to sound silly. There's a young man over at Columbus Grove who I think is the best running back in all Northwest Ohio, and it's Trenton Barraza. Yeah. Would we be surprised if that kid doesn't run for 16, 1,700 yards and is mentioned in Mr. Football Conversation? I think you got to think about it. He's big. He's strong. He's fast. Their team is good. They get a lot of exposure. It's not far-fetched. Danny, I was talking to the people at Columbus Grove the other day. He's 2,400 yards short of being the all-time leading rusher there. Um, Blaine, uh, Blaine Mag has that record. Pretty there. good player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah really good. Um, but they're concerned that they might get too many running clock opportunities and shorten the game. And so they're like, we want to make sure Trent gets that record because they all believe 2,400 yards is within reach. The key for him is think, shining in big games. Yeah. I think the other thing with that, Danny, is they have a really good quarterback and good wide receiver. Yes, they, they may not use him as much as he would to, to get those 1,600 yards we talked about. Remember, guys, we don't have to be right. We don't have to be wrong. We yeah, just have to right. be interesting. It's three wise men. It's the WOSN podcast. Podcast. We thank you guys so much. Guys, appreciate you guys coming on, and uh, let's do it again next week and cover all of high school sports for WOS. This was awesome. Thanks a lot, guys.